Ink Ribbon. We are gathered here today to say farewell to a handheld. A handheld that had so much promise and potential, but was taken from us before that could happen. And by taken from us, I mean murdered. Murdered by its own parents! Oh! So yeah, I'm one of like 12 people who still plays the Vita. In fact, I have it on a cradle next to my bed and I play it at night to help me fall asleep. And occasionally I fall asleep while playing it and it hits me in the face. Thanks, little buddy. The Vita itself is beautifully made. It's sturdy, it's rugged, it can support some pretty amazing graphics, and it improved on the PSP in every way. I really think it's one of the best gaming devices ever made. So why did it fail? I really don't understand what happened. People have placed the blame on everything from the abundance of mobile games to Nintendo being the bigger competitor, but I don't think either of those arguments hold water. While mobile games are a big thing now, they aren't really made for gamers per se. They're more suited for casual gamers. Just ask Blizzard. Just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? <laughs> uh... Plus, tech nerds like me don't really like playing on mobile for several reasons. Aside from the garbage pile of free to play microtransaction type games, there's also the fact that it kills my battery, prevents me from using my phone, and that mobile controls are usually awful. I am very happy to have a handheld for gaming on the go. As far as Nintendo's concerned, people claiming that it was just better or had more games doesn't mean it automatically destroyed the Vita, because Nintendo still owned Sony when it came to the PSP. They definitely had different demographics, and maybe one had something over the other, but they were different enough to offer mass appeal to different audiences. But the Vita and the PSP have one big difference, and that is first party support. And I don't mean games, because we all know first party games to promote a new system are always mediocre. I'm talking about actual support. Advertising, commissioned games, exclusive titles, etc. At first it seemed like Sony was trying, but almost immediately it went to half-heartedly supporting the Vita to just not even caring about it. To be fair though, once I saw the sales figures for the Vita, I guess I couldn't really blame Sony. It's bad. Like, it's really bad. So to give you an idea of how bad, the 3DS sold about 75 million units. The Vita sold about 10 million. And then you have the game sales. If you take all the top 10 selling Vita games and combine their entire revenue together, it comes out to about the same as what Uncharted 4 made for the PS4. So like I said, I can't really blame Sony. If something isn't making money, there's only so much you can do. But there is a silver lining. If you're like me, you check on the PlayStation Store every now and then and see that there is a steady flow of new indie games constantly. Some good, some blah, but still. While I don't think there's a clear way to re-strategize and present the Vita as an indie platform, I do think that it makes a very good one. So obviously the Vita's discontinuation is inevitable, but what does the future hold for it? I guess we'll have to wait and see. I don't even talk about Vita games on my channel because I assume nobody's gonna watch them. Uh, but if you are someone who loves the Vita and want me to talk about it a little more, I'd be happy to. Just let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video, check out my other stuff and feel free to subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to check out the community tab where you can vote on future videos. I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. <laughs>